Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name, glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Good morning, Miss Kathy and Mel. Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name in all the earth. Spirit, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Yes, glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the well, good morning, Miss Yolinda, on this beautiful April 16th, brand new day made by the Lord. Oh, I wonder what all is in it. Well, whatever it is, we need to fill up on God's Word, don't we? We need to prepare and be ready, and be ready to give thanks for whatever it is, knowing that we serve a living God who will comfort us, he will direct us, he will help us in every way, he will deliver us, he will lead us on in victory, he will heal us. I mean, we could make a long list, couldn't we, of the goodness of our Lord. Today, we will be reading from Joshua, Yahoshua. Good morning, Miss Maria. You are just in time for the reading. We will be reading from Yehoshua, Joshua, chapter 13, 13, and on into 14. And this is a very, very important chapter. <clears throat> Morning, Stoney. Nice to see your name. Nice to know you're here. We will be reading from Joshua 13, Stoney, if you'd like to get that ready. <clears throat> and this whole chapter is a detailed outline of the land, and particularly the land that is yet to be conquered. I mean, Joshua has conquered a lot. And as Scott so wonderfully put down for us yesterday, doesn't really tell us, but that it's seven years it took to do what he did, and then seven more years to distribute it. <clears throat> I mean, just imagine all that had to go into that, and moving, and just lots of things, but there was a lot more. And the main reason today for us that this chapter is so important is a, they don't have a lot of this land that we're going to read today, <clears throat> but they will. They will get back the whole inheritance. Miss Joy, welcome. Nice to see you here. And so we need to know what what is that land? What are those boundaries? So I'm asking you to take a real special interest in this <clears throat> because many of us could very well live through the regaining of all this land again. Israel is a nation again, established. God is bringing his people back, still bringing them back every day from all around the world. So let's see what all these boundaries and places are. 
Joshua 13. <clears throat> now, Yehoshua was old, advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, you are old, advanced in years, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed. I mean, I don't you think he would have gone, oh, he's very old, but the Lord's going to tell him all that needs to happen yet. This is the land that yet remains all the territory of the Philistines and all that of the Girgashites from Sihor, which is east of Egypt as far as the border of Ekron northward, which is counted as Canaanite, the five lords of the Philistines, the Gazites, the Ashdodites, the Ashkelonites, the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Avites <clears throat> from the south all the land of the Canaanites and Meriah that belongs to the Sidonians as far as Apek, to the border of the Amorites, the land of the Gabalites, and all of Lebanon toward the sunrise from Baal Gad below Mount Hermon as far as the entrance to Homath, all the inhabitants of the mountains from Lebanon as far as the book Mishraprof and all the Sidonians. Stoney, we didn't know you were in the hospital. Well, soak up the word. Soak it up, brother, for your healing today. Oh, my goodness. We will pray for you. <clears throat> and I will drive out before the children of Israel. So the Lord says, never fear here, I am still in charge. Only divide it by lot to Israel as an inheritance as I have commanded you. Now therefore, divide this land as an inheritance to the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. <clears throat> With the other half tribe, the Reubenites and the Gadites received their inheritance which Moses had given them beyond the Jordan eastward, as Moses the servant of the Lord had given them, from Aroer, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, and the town that is in the midst of the ravine, and all the plain of Mediba as far as Deban, all the cities of Sihon king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, as far as the border of the children of Ammon, Gilead, and the border of the Gersherites, and the Maacathites, and all of Mount Hermon, and all Bashan, as far as Salca, <clears throat> all the kingdom of Og in Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth and Edari, who remained of the remnant of the giants, for Moses had defeated and cast out these. Nevertheless, the children of Israel did not drive out the Gersherites or the Maacathites, or, but the Gersherites and the Maacathites dwell among the Israelites until this day. Only the tribe of Levi, he had given no inheritance, the sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by fire, are their inheritance, as he said to them. And Moses had given to the tribe of the children of Reuben an inheritance according to their families. Their territory was from Orer, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the ravine, and all the plain by Mediba, Heshbon, and all its cities that are in the plain, Deban, Bamoth, Baal, Beit Baal, Mion, Yahaza, Kedemoth, Mepaath, Kirjaathim, Sibma, <coughs> Zareth, Shahar, on the mountain of the valley, Beit Peor, the slopes of Pisgah, and Beit Jeshemoth, all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom 
of Zihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses had struck with the princes of Midian, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, who were princes of Zihon dwelling in the country. The children of Israel also killed with the sword Balaam, the son of Beor. Remember him? Mm. The soothsayer among those who were killed by them. And the border of the children of Reuben was the bank of the Jordan. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben according to their families, the cities, and their villages. Moses also had given an inheritance to the tribe of Gad, to the children of Gad according to their families. Their territory was Jezer and all the cities of Gilead and half the land of the Ammonites as far as Orer, which is before Rabbah, and from Heshbon to Ramoth Mizpah and Betonim, and from Menhanaim to the border of Debir, and in the valley of Beit Haram, Beit Nimrah, Sakoth, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon, with the Jordan as its border, as far as the edge of the Sea of Chidereth. Good morning, Miss Connie. Miss Connie, we are reading Joshua 13, and we are up to 28. And we are reading about all the land here that the Lord has said to Joshua in his old advanced years needed to be gathered and inherited also. And we know that today they need to get much of that back. So this is important for us to know. How much land do they need to have that God declared their inheritance. 28, this is the inheritance of the children of Gad according to their families, the cities and their villages. Moses, Moshe, also had given an inheritance to half the tribe of Manasseh. It was for half the tribe of the children of Manasseh according to their families. Their territory was from Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan, 60 cities, half of Gilead, and Ashtaroth and Edari, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were for the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, for half of the children of Machir, according to their families. These are the areas which Moses had distributed as an inheritance in the plains of Moab on the other side of the Jordan by Jericho eastward. Good morning, August. Nice to have you here. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance as he had said to them. So now we will move along <clears throat> to chapter 14 of Joshua. 14 of Joshua. These are the areas which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed as an inheritance to them. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and the half tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of the two tribes and the half tribe on the other side of the Jordan. But to the Levites, he'd given no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were true tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Remember, the Lord prophesied through Jacob that, and Jacob took them, the two sons of Joseph, as sons. 
not just grandsons, but as sons. So they are in here on this distribution for the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and they gave no part to the Levites in the land except cities to dwell in with their common lands for their livestock and their property. As the Lord had commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet, I am strong this day, as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Wow, that's an encouragement to me. <laughs> now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Wow! Here's this 85-year-old man, confident as can be in his strength to go get this land and drive out giants to get it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! When you're in the Lord, miracles happen. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron, Formerly was Kirjath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. So it was named after the greatest man of the giants. So no wonder they changed it to Hebron. Then the land had rest from war. Woo! Hallelujah. So there you have it detailed, just like the Lord is with you and I, counted all the hairs on our head this morning, very, very much detailed about everything for us. He wants the best for us, and he wants healing for us. Our dear brother Stoney, healing, healing in that bed you are lying in. All right, we move along to Luke Chapter 18, Luke, Lucellus. I hope I pronounced that right. <clears throat> Scott yesterday gave um, all the, uh, how the name is. Good morning, Miss Wanda and Karen. Nice to see you, Karen. We are just to begin Luke 18, ladies. You're just in time. And then Jesus spoke a parable to them that men ought 
always to pray and not lose heart. Wow. Now there is a message for today. Always pray and do not lose heart, saying, and here's what he told to illustrate it. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. <laughs> There's a good woman for you, by golly. She said, I'm going back to him and back to him and back to him until he does it. <laughs> I, I love that parable. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Very good question. Yes, Stoney says, persistence. Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. <clears throat> Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus, within himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. And then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, Let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Woo! I mean, we're talking about children. Sounded sweet, but really... That was a very serious statement by the Lord. All of his statements are serious, <laughs> right? Okay, we move right along, y'all, to Psalm 85. Psalm 85. This is a psalm of the sons of Korah given to the chief musician. Oh, one day, one day we will hear all of these tunes that were originally written when we get to heaven. Won't that be exciting? Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. And you should go back to yesterday's reading and read all that Scott said about how they went about 
these psalms in prayer and praise and really what Selah covers in meaning. Go back. It is, it is very rich to read. All right, verse 3. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O oh God of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again? that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Isn't that beautiful? Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Beautiful. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and shall make his footsteps, his footsteps, our pathway. Oh, that's what we want, isn't it? We want his footsteps to be our pathway. Stoney says he loves this verse. Praise God. <laughs> Yolinda is grateful for another day. So am I. Praise the Lord. Before I close up with Proverbs, I, I do need to tell you <clears throat> uh, that for months now I've been cutting down, giving away, throwing out, sorting, arranging, just gearing up for another move from this apartment that we are in. And so we are now over our, our son and daughter and our daughter and son-in-law have a charming little house on their property that was built in 1898 or something. And they've completely remodeled it down through several years here. And it's been used for friends and family to stay in when they come. But they have come to us and they've said, Mom and Dad, we want you to give up the apartment and paying rent and all that. We want you to come and live. We call it the little house. It was the caretaker's house for the plantation of that area. And it has every, it has uh, one, two, three, four, five, five rooms. And every room except the kitchen, which was added on later, Every room has one whole wall as a fireplace, which is charming and beautiful. But you take one whole wall as a fireplace, two windows and a door, and you're going, now let's see, where am I going to put the buffet? <laughs> anyway, we're arranging it very nicely. It's charming, but I'm tired. <laughs> and I'd like you to pray for me too. I'll trade you, Stoney. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. I've had this knee that I can hardly walk. I'm limping along. This little boy at our apartment complex the other day, he was riding his bike and he stopped just dead. He said, he looked at me and he said, you're old. <laughs> and I said, yes. I said, but I'm faster than this. I just have a knee that hurts. <laughs> you're old. Woo. Okay, it's the truth. Anyway, y'all, I get in the car every morning at 6 o'clock and I drive over here to the apartment. Yet you notice the background, my, my beautiful drop, and I can't figure out how to use that. I would keep that forever. I mean, that's kind of like my trademark, isn't it? So I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to get the good lighting I have and all. So I'm driving over here every day to read. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I 
I miss you. I, I, I was going to have Kathy put on last year's. And my spirit was not happy. All right, enough gab. But I thought I deserved, I needed to tell you that one of these days, you're going to see a whole new setting and oh, the surrounding trees and everything are so beautiful. I I plan to do some some very nice readings with a new background for you. We wrap up today with Proverbs 13, verses 7 and 8. Proverbs 13, 7 and 8. So true. There is one who makes himself rich, yet he has nothing. And then there's one who makes himself poor, and yet he has great riches all the riches that can't be purchased, right? The ransom of a man's life is his riches. But the poor does not hear rebuke. The poor does not hear rebuke. How about that? And it probably has a lot to figure in with the reason they're poor. Right? Let's not be one of those Let's be one of the wise ones, the righteous ones. Well, let's wrap it up in prayer, and we will do what the Word said to us today, <clears throat> to always be in prayer and not shrink back in fear for this day. We're in, we're in great training, aren't we? God is picking up, saying to the body of Christ, get up. We are marching deeper into the end times. Get committed, get filled with my word. We have places to go and things to do, right? Hallelujah. Satan thinks he's winning right now, but God's plan always supersedes him. Supersedes him. Yes, glory to God. Ah, Jesus. Father God, we love your word. And it's you. You are the word. You are the word, Jesus. And we love you so much. Having just celebrated Passover, I call it resurrection. We celebrated resurrection. The gift of eternal life. You've given that to us. And you suffered to pay for our sins, that we would have the right to be born again, that we could come in, that we could fulfill all of the law in you, in you. What a, what a covenant you've given us now. We are so blessed, Father God, that you chose to have us born in this generation and at this time. And we know that you are going to use each and every one of us mightily. We see all of the roadblocks Satan has been badgering us with, but we're coming out of all of them. And we're going to declare, we're going to declare like Caleb did. I'm strong. I'm old, but I'm strong. And I can go do battle with giants yet. Hallelujah. And we know that's how you're using us. So be encouraged today, y'all. Be encouraged as we, we visit in prayer. Abba Father, wonderful Jesus, and Holy Ghost that I started singing about. And I said, glorify. The song says, glorify your name in all the earth. Yes, that's what we say. We say to you, precious Trinity, and we hold up your Israel, your land that we read about. You allowed us to read all of the details of the different border lines of your land. Ah, oh, and we can see some wonderful illustrations in Kathy's graphics. Go take in Kathy's graphics. So we hold up Israel to you, Father. We hold up Jerusalem like you asked us to, Jesus. And we pray for her peace. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace 
of Israel at this time that they are all home, told to go home and stay there and celebrate all the days of Passover at home. No work, no tourists, quiet streets. Wow. Wow. You can do whatever you want to do, Lord. And so we will wait on you. We will take courage. We will not fear. We declare that, Lord. We need to declare with, with firm words and firm commitment from our hearts and our minds to embrace this day in this time and to pray like never before, to fast like never before. Esther and her ladies fasted three days, three nights, no food, no drink, not even for the animals, all of the Jews. And you gave them back the whole country, the whole people. Powerful what prayer and fasting will do. Help us, Lord. Help us to deny ourselves. To deny ourselves just for you. Lord, I hold up America. And I'd ask, Lord, that you would be with this anointed man, President Donald John Trump, that you have chosen. He is a trumpet. He is a wrecking ball to those that would desire to take us down. A wrecking ball. Bold, brave, I don't know how the man puts up with all he does, except I do understand. He's in you, he's anointed by you. The average person on their own, I doubt, I doubt they could do it, or I could do it. Father, we ask that you surround him with guardian angels, that you continue to give him good counsel, that you show him any time there is an enemy within the camp or in the White House. Show him, Lord, and keep him bold and brave to do your will, to do your will. We are believing that with this man who is gifted in business, proved it to the whole world, to the whole world, causing us to excel, causing the debt to begin to go down, causing good things. And then, oh my, along came all of this. But Lord, we know you can do it again because we read things that you do over and over again in your word. You bring healing over and over, redemption, deliverance over and over again. You did it with your people as the example for us. You're doing it today with your people. Thank you, Lord. We ask you, hear our prayers for President Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, the entire administration, and all of the righteous in the government who are standing up now stronger than they ever have. Cause them to be bold as lions and harmless as doves. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you in prayer, Lord. We worship you. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we hold up stony. We ask you to heal him totally from his head to his toe. Lord, we hold up all who need healing. Lord, our sister Janine. Lord, I hold up my knee to you. I hold up this right leg to you. Lord, we believe what you did on the cross. 
We believe that you purchased for us salvation. And sozo means healing, to heal. Oh yes, to heal. Shalom, shalom, total peace, total joy, nothing lacking, no needs. We sing to you, Lord. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, we'd ask that you would refresh and restore and strengthen all of the nurses and the medical people, the first responders, all who are out there putting their lives on the line to do what they know. Lord, we'd ask that you would be with, especially those in all of the Israeli labs where you are bringing forth great, great things. You are bringing forth all kinds of things to help in all of these areas. And we bless you for it, Lord. Bless you, show us all of the good things that we might have faith for you to use the bad things to turn around for good. Lord, we'd ask you to bring many, many today to their own salvation. Family and loved ones that we are praying for, some we've been praying for for years and years. Oh, precious Lord, send Holy Ghost to them and use all that is currently in their lives to draw them unto you, that their hearts would soften and they would see their need, and they would see your goodness. It's the goodness of the Lord that draws us, the goodness. We thank you for this, Lord, and I ask you, hear all the prayers of your saints who are here now and all through the day in the night or tomorrow or whenever you cause them to listen to your word. Bless you. Bless those, Lord, please, who have come. And we will give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Amen. Yes, Sonny, we will receive so-so. Have a great day in the Lord. I love you all so very much. You are my heart. You are my heart. Thank you. Bye-bye.